guys, I just wanted to welcome you to a little bit of introduction on acids and bases. This is video 11-1 in the chemistry unit, and again, we're going to be taking a look at some acids and bases today. What makes acids and bases unique? Why are they important to chemistry? And how can we identify them? So we're going to take a look at all of those things today. So pretty exciting day when we take a look at chemistry. All right? You guys have any questions? Let's roll. Our objectives today, you're going to be able to identify the physical and chemical properties of acids and bases. So you're going to be able to tell me what goes on with an acid, what makes an acid an acid, why is it an acid, and then what are some chemical and physical properties of acids, as well as bases. You're going to be able to classify solutions as either an acid, basic, or neutral. And you're going to compare several different definitions of acids and bases, including the Arrhenius and the Bronsted-Lowry models of acids and bases. What makes them different from each other, and how can we go through and identify different types of acids and bases? So those are just the objectives that we're going to look at today, and we will move on from there. So let's talk a little bit about acids and bases, and what are some of those properties that make acids and bases unique? Acids include things like HCl and HNO3, hydrochloric acid and nitric acid and they are electrolytes so when they dissolve in solution they have the ability to conduct electricity and they're sour tasting so you think of things like lemons soda alright those are acids alright so you may know that acids can burn through things or erode things alright you've probably heard acids being used quite a lot and they're quite common in chemistry in addition to that bases such as NaOH and BaOH2, sodium hydroxide and barium hydroxide, are also electrolytes. They tend to be bitter tasting. Um, you know, things like soaps and bleaches, typically a lot of cleaners, are bases, and they tend to be slippery to the touch as well. So again, lots of different acids and bases that you find at your home and all throughout the globe. So acids and bases are very common chemicals that you see on a daily basis. So what particularly makes an acid an acid and a base a base? Well, looking at some definitions, we can understand that water solutions contain both a hydrogen right, and a hydroxide ion. H plus is your hydrogen ion, and hydroxide is an OH ion. So we have H2O, right, which is water. If we break it down, we get H and OH. So water contains both one H and one OH. To determine how acidic or basic something is, we have to look at the relative concentration of these. We have to look at how much H there is compared to how much OH there is. If there's more H than OH, the solution is considered acidic. If there is more OH than H, the solution is considered basic. And if there's the same amount of each, same amount of H and OH, the solution is considered neutral. You probably heard that water is one of the few neutral solutions in terms of its pH, in terms of the acidity of water. And that's because for each water molecule, you get one H and one OH. So if I have a mole of water molecules, I have one mole of H and one mole of OH. There's no more H than OH inside a water molecule and inside a water solution. So how do we get more H than OH? And we have to look at two different models in order to better understand this. The first is the Arrhenius model. The Arrhenius model says that acids donate hydrogen ions when they're placed in solution. So you see there at the bottom we have HCl, which is an acid, and when we put it in water it breaks apart or dissociates into H plus and Cl minus. So as a result, by adding more H plus ions to the water, we make it more acidic. All right, More H plus than OH makes it acidic. So by adding HCl and having it break apart into H and Cl, that extra H makes it acidic. Bases donate OH in solution, so when we take sodium hydroxide, NaOH, and we break it apart or have it dissociate in water, it breaks apart into Na plus and OH minus. This adds more OH ions to the water, therefore making it more basic. So the Arrhenius model states that if we add H's, we are acidic. If we donate OH, we are basic. And this makes it very easy to look at and determine which 
molecules are acidic or basic. So by looking here, we can get an understanding of how something may possibly be acidic or basic. So let's take a look at this and try to get a better understanding. We look at the first one, HBr. Let's take a look at that one. Obviously, when we go put it into solution, it's going to break apart into H plus and Br minus. Okay, it's going to break apart into its individual ions. Because it donates an H plus, we call this an acid. All right, this is an acid because it breaks apart and donates an H plus ion in solution. If we scroll down and look at CaOH2, when it's placed into solution, it's going to break apart into Ca, which has a plus 2 charge, and 2OH minus. All right, we have two OH minuses. Because it donates OH minus when it's placed into solution, that makes it basic. All right, again, Let's look at H2O. H2O breaks apart into H plus and OH minus. So it do both donates an H plus and an OH minus. So this is actually neutral when it's placed into solution. It does not give one. This is considered neutral in solution because the amount of H plus and OH minus stay the same. The bronsted lowry model describes acids as a hydrogen ion donor, and the base is a hydrogen ion acceptor. So if we look at the full chemical equations here, we can get a better understanding of which of these are acids and bases. If we look at the first one, we see that HF becomes F- minus in the products. This tells us that HF donates that hydrogen, and therefore is the acid because it is the hydrogen ion donor. H2O in the reactants is H2O, but in the products it is H3O+. Plus. That tells us that it has accepted the hydrogen, and therefore it is a base. All right, so all you have to really do is look at it and see which one the H has left and which one the H has transferred to. All right, it is leaves the acid and goes to the base. If we look at the second equation, we see that NH3 plus H2O gives us NH4 plus and OH minus. The H2O donates the hydrogen to NH4. So you can see that H2O becomes OH minus. Therefore, since it donates that hydrogen, it is an acid. If NH3 accepts the hydrogen, therefore it is a base. All right, so do you see how NH3 accepts that hydrogen when the chemical reaction takes place? And H2O, that hydrogen ion, leaves. So that's the bronsted lowry model. It's a little more in-depth. We can classify more things as acids and bases this way. There's another model called the Lewis model, and we won't talk about that. But that talks about electrons and how electrons have an impact on whether it's an acid or base. So if we look at this, we can see we can determine several different other vocabulary terms known as conjugate acid or conjugate base. So we see here that the conjugate acid is the chemical that accepts the hydrogen. So in that first equation, H2O, which is our base, all right, because it, and H3O plus, therefore, is our conjugate acid. It accepts the hydrogen. So the acid is HF, but the conjugate acid is H3O plus. In addition, the conjugate base is the chemical that donated the hydrogen, okay? So if we look, H2O is our base in the first problem, but F minus, because the hydrogen has left it, that makes it our conjugate base, okay? So these are just some terminologies that you need to think about. It looks like you just have to look and figure out which one accepted the hydrogen, which one donated the hydrogen, all that good stuff, okay? We'll do some more practice with this a little bit later on. Another term we use to describe water is what's called amphoteric because it can act as either an acid or base. If you look at the two equations above, in the first equation, H2O acts as a base. In the second one, it acts as an acid. So it all depends on what you're adding, water, adding to water to determine if it's going to be an acid or base in a chemical reaction. So looking at these molecules here, let's try to get a better understanding of which one's the acid, the base, the conjugate acid, and the conjugate base? So, 
We need to look here and see which one. Let's just do acid first. All right, let's look at acid first. It is the one that is donated the hydrogen. So which of these donates a hydrogen in the first equation here? If we look, we see that HClO2 actually donates the hydrogen. So therefore, this is your acid. H2O, all right, accepts it in the end. So this is the base. Because this has accepted that hydrogen, we call that our conjugate acid. And because this one has lost one, this is our conjugate base. All right? So again, your acid is the one that donates the hydrogen. The conjugate acid is the one that accepts it. The base is what is going to accept the hydrogen ion. And the conjugate base is what has lost the hydrogen. All right? So we need to look at the hydrogens to be able to understand which ones are the acid, the base, the conjugate acid, and the conjugate base. So looking at the second equation, which one of those is going to donate its hydrogen ion? If we look, we see that H2O is going to donate its hydrogen to ClO-. Since this is going to accept it, this is our base. Because this HClO has the accepted hydrogen ion, it is our conjugate acid. And because OH minus, the hydrogen has already been donated, that is our conjugate base. All right. So again, it's just one step at a time. How do we go through and figure this out? You need to ask yourself those questions as you go through and determine which ones are acids, bases, conjugate acids, and conjugate bases. Some acids have more than one hydrogen ion associated with them. HCl and HF have just one, and they're called monoprotic acids. But some acids can donate more than one proton per molecule, or one hydrogen ion per molecule. And that includes things like H2SO4, H3PO4, and these are called polyprotic acids, meaning that they have more than one hydrogen ion they can donate. So H2SO4 would be diprotic, H3PO4 would be triprotic, okay? These are all the roots that we already know. So I just want to make sure that you understand the difference between some of these acids and bases. So hopefully now you can be able to identify some physical and chemical properties of acids and bases, classify solutions as acidic, basic, or neutral, and compare the two different models of acids and bases. Hopefully you get a better understanding of this. If you have any questions, I really hope that you write them down on the bottom of your note page and let me know them the next time I see you in class, all right? Hopefully this helps clear things up, and um, I'll see you guys next time I see you. Take care, guys. We'll talk to you later.